When we think of a semi-hydroponic setup, we think of a reservoir and a form of media that has wicking characteristics in order for the water within the reservoir to be evenly distributed throughout the area within the pot. Above the reservoir providing the roots of our orchids with access to moisture and nutrients on a continued basis. Lava rock does not have wicking characteristics, so why do I use it in many semi-hydroponic setups in my collection, but not in all pots? And without wicking characteristics, why does it work in a semi-hydroponic setup and are there any limitations? Janina Carlona, I hope that this video will be the end of any confusion as to why lava rock is an effective inorganic media for a semi-hydroponic setup, as well as the limitations of lava rock in this kind of setup. Thank you for your question. Thank you for being here. If you think that this is already a good topic, would you please hit that like button? And if you have not subscribed, consider subscribing because while it may take a little time to get your request videos filmed and uploaded, the modus operandi on my channel is make this channel work for you. So there are more videos like this coming out and more videos that are direct answers to questions from the comments. And it would be wonderful if you were to take advantage of the channel, make it work for you by subscribing. I cannot do this without you. So thank you so much and let's get into it. While 80% of my collection is in Lekka and self-watering, the rest is in Lava Rock and the classic semi-hydroponics. Lekka has wicking characteristics, so it makes immediate sense that Lekka will distribute water and nutrients evenly around the root system because of the wicking characteristics. But I'm also using Lava Rock in semi-hydro with the adaptation to self-watering when necessary and warranted. And yet, as mentioned, Lava Rock does not have any wicking qualities. So what makes Lava Rock a great inorganic media for semi-hydroponics even though it does not wick? Let's address the pros first. Using Lava Rock happens to be a common choice for a standalone hydroponic growing medium because they are extremely porous, inorganic, pH neutral, retain water, are easy to handle and are readily available. Most importantly, lava rocks for hydroponics also come in various shapes, sizes, weights, and colors. Lava rocks are also weightier than some popular hydroponic growing mediums, such as coca choir or peat. That means it serves much, much better as an anchor for medium to large hydroponic orchids than other growing mediums. Lava rocks are also known for removing nitrates from the water, which makes them even more of a diverse growing medium for hydroponics. One last noteworthy reason to use lava rocks for hydroponics is that they are readily available and practically last forever and they don't degrade like organic growing mediums do when used as an alternative to Lekka. Lava rock is also much cheaper than Lekka. So as the collection of orchids grow, the burden on the wallet is not exacerbated the way it may be when it comes to purchasing Lekka in large quantities. Lava rock is also ready to go right out of the bag after all the dust and debris that may have accumulated in a bag has been rinsed off. There is no leaching needed as would be the case with Lekka. There is no need to check the TDS, the pH and wait until all the values fall into place in order to pot up the orchid. What I do is take my new lava rock out of the bag, rinse the dust off and boil it just to sterilize it and that would also remove any hitchhikers that may have come along from the nursery where I buy my lava rock at. And then if I need it straight away, in the pot it goes once it has cooled down, of course. With Lekka, it is a process of making sure that the pH value stabilizes as well as the parts per million are reduced to an acceptable level for use with our orchids. This can take weeks, if not months, to get the Lekka leached with several water changes None of that is required with Lava Rock. Now the jury is out if this is an advantage or disadvantage. For me, it's an advantage. And for that reason, I'm including it in the advantages. Lava Rock is inert, meaning it provides zero nutritional value. And the entire nutrition addition process in form of fertilizer and supplements is up to the grower. So you can tell very quickly when there are deficiencies and adjust accordingly as per the orchid in question. Another thing that I consider an advantage is that while using lava rock, because we are in control as to how much we fertilize and supplement, the media itself has a lot of minerals in it, which over time leach into the water and subsequently provide some value to our orchids. 
However, this is not to take away the importance of fertilizing and supplementing with nutrients. The process of this leaching is so minimal, we cannot rely on it to be the main source of nutrition for an extended period of time. The minerals that are more predominant in lava rock, which are a benefit to our orchids over many, many years within the pot, include iron, magnesium and calcium. With lava rock, you can grow in a wet dry cycle if that is your preference. You do not need to keep the lava rock damp at all times, making it a fantastic media for all climates that have a cooler winter to deal with. Roots can be kept drier and the added beauty of lava rock is that. In the event of keeping the roots damp, if the conditions permit, it does not have the effect of evaporative cooling. As lava rock does not have the wicking characteristics, there is no need to maintain that throughout adverse conditions. Instead, once conditions are ideal and the orchid is in active growth, all you need to do is flush the pot to the top of the media, let it drain, and in doing so, filling the reservoir. As plain water is ideal for the first flush, if the orchid is in any form of active growth, then do the same again with fertilized water. But this time there is no need to fill the pot with a solution, now it's only necessary to fill the pot halfway. This will push out the plain water from the reservoir and the fertilized water will settle into that space. Lava rocks are very porous, meaning there are numerous empty spaces on their surface for liquids or gases to flow through and settle. The porosity is due to the presence of gas bubbles in the lava or the magma flow, which forms holes on the surface during the cooling process. These holes or cavities are known as vesicles. As a result of their porosity, they generally have a low density. Their vesicular nature causes lava rocks to have a sponge-like appearance, making them popular. And all that, what I just mentioned, is the key to lava rock being ideal in a semi-hydroponic setup, be it with the classic two holes in the pot creating the reservoir or the self-watering adaptation where the reservoir sits below an inner pot that is placed within a mask. The porous nature of the structure around each lava rock allows the water to accumulate within all the cavities, holes, or as they are correctly defined, vesicles. Now, how to make lava rock work as a semi-hydroponic media for orchids? Bearing in mind, it has absolutely no wicking characteristics. And this is different to using LECA in the same setup. With LECA, we use it wet as we fill the pot and the wicking characteristics do the rest using the reservoir as the source of water. When potting up with lava rock, you can either use it dry or wet. That all depends on what you have on hand, your environment and your preference. But the first course of action after potting up your orchids is to give the pot a good flush with fresh water, filling the pot to the top no matter if you use the lava rock wet or dry. This way the entire pot is wet and all the vesicles are filled to capacity with water replacing the oxygen that was there temporarily. From that moment on, roots are in a very damp environment because what happens between the first flushing of the pot and the next watering is evaporation. And that takes a very, very long time. So the surface of the pot may dry out and look dry, but still, because of the sponge-like appearance of the structure of the lava rock, the evaporation to the point of the reservoir being empty would take a very, very long time. Meanwhile, though, the roots have constant access to moisture and nutrients. Now, in the growing season, the orchid is going to play its part in emptying out the reservoir because hopefully it is growing well. And the roots are using up the moisture in the area where they are at in the pot. So it's not a set it and forget it situation. You still have to water and fertilize according to the demands of the orchid but the water will be evenly distributed within the pot because of the regular adding of water and the structure of the lava rock working in harmony. Now, having gone into how great lava rock is, how it works, and what the advantages are, if it sounds too good to be true, then, well, what's the catch? You see, the lava rock does not have any wicking characteristics. That's why we're here today in this video. There are limitations in its use for semi-hydroponics, and that starts to come into effect when we consider pot size and the size of the lava rock that would be ideal for the orchid and pot in question. Large pieces of lava rock will lose their moisture within the pot faster than smaller pieces of lava rock. Not all orchids appreciate small pieces of lava rock. The rule of thumb is, the finer the roots, 
the lava rock sizes should match and vice versa. The large and chunkier the roots are, the size of the lava rock should take that into consideration as well. So the setup can be manipulated to a certain degree only before we end up growing an orchid in a wet dry cycle because the size of the pot will determine how the lava rock can hold onto and retain moisture. My largest pots with lava rock are 18 by 18 centimeters, be it square or round, but I have already tweaked the setup by adding a wicking media into the lava rock because I do not want to lose the effectiveness of the setup. While I could have used only small lava rock in a pot already this size, I do not have the guarantee that the evaporation from the surface will happen faster than I would like to, compromising the humidity I need at the top Keeping in mind, I grow in a very, very dry climate, so my maximum pot size with lava rock only in a semi-hydro setup is 15 centimeters, no matter the size of lava rock I choose. But if you grow your orchids in a humid environment, your conditions are going to extend the limitations of using lava rock in a semi-hydroponic setup and allow for bigger pots because the evaporation on the surface will be greatly reduced even if you have a lot of airflow. In that case, you can increase the size of the pot, tweaking the lava rock mix the different sizes to suit your conditions. I would recommend using large lava rock pieces to fill the reservoir and then medium to small size lava rock for the rest of the setup. The larger the pot gets, the smaller the lava rock itself has to be to counteract the size and keep the retention of the water intact within the pot for the semi-hydroponic setup to work. If you have any questions with your ratios, your growing conditions and using lava rock in a semi-hydro setup, please let me know in the comments and I will be able to help you out with your ratios, no matter the orchid you're wanting to pot up. And again, don't forget to give this video a like if the information is answering any doubts you may have had up to this point. Thank you so, so much. Tweaking the lava rock size for the size of the pot and your environment is something that can be observed over a period of time However, there are two major downsides for me and lava rock. That is why I do not use it in all of my pots. One being the weight of the pot. As we do not want to disturb our orchids, hence inorganic media is such an advantage, we do not have to repot on a biannual schedule if the orchid has not outgrown the pot. The orchid will grow in size, increasing the weight of the pot over time. This is something to be mindful of if you're in a similar position to mine, where mobility issues can make carrying the pots difficult. And then, roots love lava rock so much. And remember those vesicles? Well, orchid roots will attach to every little nook, every little cranny that vesicles provide. While wonderful, while the orchid is in the pot, when it comes to repotting, it is almost impossible to gently remove the roots from the lava rock without causing major damage to the velamen and compromising any viable roots that were in the pot to serve a purpose in the new pot until the new roots take over. For lack of a less descriptive term, it is carnage on the root system and no amount of soaking the pot prior to a repot is going to change that. Especially on orchids that are prone to dumping their root systems, renewing their root systems. While frequent flushing is going to keep the climate of the pot intact and healthy, and seeing as there is no degrading over time, most of us, when we repot, would like to remove dead roots. So be very, very careful when it comes to repotting, when it comes to removing dead roots. Remember that the lava rock that is clinging on to other roots, vice versa, roots cling on to lava rock, that increases the weight and it can snap roots very, very easily. So take your time, remove dead roots, get lava rock out if need be on a repot, but be mindful of anything that is viable in the pot as you repot to not crack it or in any other way damage the velamen and ideally only repot orchids that are grown in lava rock when a new root system is already starting to grow. And that'll give you plan B at least if there is damage to the root system that is still viable, whatever comes afterwards is right on track to support the orchid moving forward. So that is why the orchids that I pot up in lava rock are chosen specifically for a couple of reasons. Everything that can tolerate my outdoor temperatures during the winter goes into lava rock. 
Also because pouring water through the pot, flushing and fertilizing is a doddle through the warmest months of the year. Whereas in the winter months, these pots can handle any rain as the water will drain out and then go dry. So while I do my duty during the summer by flushing the pots, during the winter months when it rains, these pots can handle any of the water that is coming down. It'll easily drain out and then they can go dry again as the orchids in question like that kind of culture and I don't carry these pots in and out every day. Also, the pot size is manageable. The orchids that I do have indoors that are potted up in lava rock are gifts and I do not like to experiment with gifted orchids in case I get the Leca ratio wrong and lose the orchid. So those are the exceptions, even though they have to come inside. And this season, I will be using Lava Rock to rescue orchids that I really hope I can still rescue because with those orchids, I got the Leca ratio completely wrong and they are in dire straits. I could use bark, but I want to stick to my inorganic growing media throughout my pot. So to hopefully rescue the orchids that I have on my radar, even though they have to come inside during the winter, I will be using lava rock in a self-watering setup and then will cross the bridge if I can rescue the orchids when the time comes to repot and hopefully not destroy the root system. To put things into perspective and not just keep coming back to my conditions, if I were growing my orchids in an environment that has consistent humidity above 75%, and I do not have to worry about any winter temperature drops and I have plenty of rain to flush my pots, all my orchids that I would want to have potted up would be in large, medium or small lava rock in a semi-hydro setup. The classic semi-hydro with the two holes serving as a reservoir. Those are the perfect conditions for using lava rock in a semi-hydro setup without the media actually having any wicking characteristics. Janina. I sincerely hope that this video was not too long-winded to answer a question that displayed some confusion with how lava rock works in a semi-hydro setup without having any wicking characteristics. The added details may have diluted the answer to your question, but I felt it was relevant to add so that all angles are covered when it comes to actually applying the semi-hydro setup using lava rock. I won't know until you tell me in the comments. And I hope that you do. If you have any further questions, let's continue the dialogue until you're satisfied and anybody else that may have questions based on this video, what is ideal, what is not ideal, we have the comment section at our disposition. Let's take advantage of them. However, if you do agree with me and think that this was a very long-winded video and you are still here, let me express how thankful I am for your support. Your time is appreciated. I do not take it for granted. Besides, I get to wish you a fabulous day. On that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.